so it does seem to kind of contradict the narrative. That why why would they teach people critical thinking if they don't want them to know it? You know, why would they talk about logical fallacies if they want people to be unable to respond to arguments? If they want people to be stupid, why teach them anything? You know, why not why not uh, like like I would say voice like I'm sure that, that you would agree that at least most of the curriculum being taught is relevant. You know, that, that in high school kids should read Animal Farm, um, that, that kids uh, kids should study biology, um, and they should, you know, they should learn algebra. Uh, so, like, why give them any of those things if we're, if we're, if we're trying to make them stupid? Um, you would think that we would teach them much more, uh, uh, let, let's say, skills that are a lot more focused on on things that would actually be relevant toward a job. Because I think a lot of what you learn in high school is not really going to help you at all in your job. The reason why I didn't respond right away is because I was trying to find the standards that uh, my local school district uses. I'm not able to find them. I'm, I've only seen them and I'm familiar with them because, you know, have, you know, James being my ex, like I go there, I, I help him grade. I, well, I don't, sometimes when he's in a crunch, I'll help him grade, right? Well, of course, I don't do that anymore, because we're not together, but uh, I imagine his current boyfriend does that now. But I'm just saying that I help him out with the grading, I help him with, you know, I go to his class, I help him set up his room, um, you know, I help him put up posters, and some of these posters are the standard. He puts up a poster in his room saying what the standards are, and one of the key standards that I remember is critical thinking. Now, now I agree um, with you that I think critical thinking should be focused on more in high school, absolutely. Now, it's my understanding, because I really got this in my first English class when I got into college, and I am in the AP classes of English, had I taken AP classes, now I didn't take AP because I was lazy, essentially. I didn't really care to work that hard, you know, I didn't want to have to read all these books and shit, you know, like AP classes are a challenge, and I just, I, I started taking one of them, and I just got transferred into a regular English class because I was lazy, that was, that's basically it, so, um, but had I stayed in that class, I would have been taught those things in high school, that's not to say that, like, what I learned in high school wasn't useless, in fact, I remember distinctly my senior year in high school, my English class, we spent a large section writing a, you know, she taught us how to do a, a paper with citations, um, like a real college paper, like what she was teaching us was how to write a college paper, and she taught us it so well that it stuck with me throughout college, and I think that that was when I really learned how to write. That is when I really learned how to argue, how to back up my arguments, how to have citations, what are appropriate citations, what are not appropriate citations. You know, sometimes I falter every now and then, but I honestly think it's just because I've been so long since I've been exposed to that information. But I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I value very much what I was taught in high school. I value very much what I was taught in college. You know, I, I just, the reason why I get so upset when people are talking in these terms uh, that this is all indoctrination, that this is all brainwashing, is that it, it just reeks of conspiracy theory to me. It reeks that these people are not succeeding in life, so instead of, uh, you know, trying to figure out if there's systemic problems in our education system, they say, well, the government, it's the government's fault, that, you know, they're just trying to keep us down. And that's bullshit. Like, a lot of these systems are not run and, and this is this is another thing, boys. You know, you keep saying, "Oh, well, this idea came from Prussia," and you know that might be true. But you know what? You know, sometimes other countries take ideas and then they do other things with them. You know, like we, you know, like for instance, Karl Marx wrote about socialism and communism, and you know, some states tried to adopt communism, and it didn't really work out. But we did take certain things from Marx, such as, you know, social democracy, this idea that uh, we should have a, uh, 
you know, a labor for a labor union. Like all, all these ideas that were kind of uh, inspired by Marx, you know, we took good things out of it and we adapted it and it worked out pretty well. You know, we didn't have all the problems that came with like strict, strict state run communism. And like I said, if you look at the way our education system is set up in this country, I mean, you've got a lot of control at the district level and at the state level. I mean, it is not top down like we. Now, the Department of Education gives guidelines, but they allow states a lot of freedom in crafting those guidelines and how best to educate their students. And uh, they are no state has the same standard as another state, and no district has the same specific standards as another district. Um, you know, they all have different goals, different ways of approaching the goals. If, if this was truly a top-down indoctrination system, then you would have no local, you know, there would be no need for you to vote on a local school board. You know, like, you know on the ballot, you know how you vote on who's going to be appointed to your school board. That's democratic, that's democratic, um, uh, you know, schooling right there. That, that's the democratic part of schooling is the fact that you get to vote on the people that get appointed to your school board, okay? And, and that right there is the total refutation of what this guy is saying is that, um, you know, that, that you get to vote and you get a chance to vote in the election, and, and and because it's at a local level, you have your vote means a lot more there. Uh, Dana, Mon, Dana Mon, I want to cut you off here because I have one word to refute everything you just said. Texas. That, that that's pretty much it. Texas. Um. Oh wait. Oh wait. Wait. Wait, wait, wait a second. I forgot, I forgot another word. Uh, Sacramento as well. Our, our school board in Sacramento is fucking atrocious. I don't, I don't know if you realize this, but, but it's fucking atrocious for me. Uh, and, and, and most of the people that got in there, uh, get, get, guess what? The, the votes weren't counted in fucking Sacramento at all, you know? And they're still trying to get rid of these fuck cards. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of a problem there. Um, you know, the, 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 very, the very idea that, that, that somehow voting uh, for people in, in, all, in, in the area of the school board, in your city or in your town or whatever, will somehow fix shit. That, that's not a pro that, that's a fucking problem because really what, what will happen is, is if you get shit like Texas, you know, where, where you have a school board full of fucking creationists uh, that will sabotage, uh, sabotage education in almost every way possible, or you get a, or you get a bunch of fucking inept retards uh, like in the school board of education here in, uh, here in Sacramento, where, where they're well-meaning, well they're, they're obviously educated, but they're completely inept at doing their fucking job, really, you know? Um, I say, I say, to be perfectly honest, um, you know, the school board of education should be board, voted upon by the public. It should, it should be based upon, uh, it, it should be like a fucking job, okay? It, it should be a job we're in which you, we're in which you, you work, um, you actually do the goddamn job that you're supposed to do, um, you're supposed to bring up the education, uh, uh, you're supposed to, uh, keep the educational level at, at a certain percentage and not make it go down, okay? If you can't keep it up at that certain percentage, um, you know, over a certain amount of time, let's say four years, you know, after reevaluating that stuff, then you're off the fucking board, and someone else who can do who can do your job. If they can't do the job, and they're fired, and then it, and it goes off until we find someone who can actually do it. You know, uh, voting voting for voting for educational boards is fucking retarded. Uh, because the, the, I mean, I have no problem with people having a say in the type of education in the type of education that their children will be exposed to. I have no problem with that really. But, but but saying we should vote for the school board is retarded because you get because you get shit like in Sacramento where I live we're in fucking Texas, <laughs> you know. So I I think your argument is, is facetious. And, and and another thing, stop with the fucking conspiracy theorist shit already, okay? I'm not I'm not engaging in conspiracy theories because I just look at the history of mandatory education. I look I, I look at the origins. I look at how it's been used throughout history, and I look at the, and I look at the results from those history, from, from from those areas, and I find and I find the whole thing totalitarian, really. 
that, that's why that, that's why I see that. I see mandatory education as largely, for the most part, totalitarian. There may there may be good intentions, sure. There, there may be good intentions, really, but again, as I've said before, um, the, road to the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And that's what I'm talking about, okay? Gee, fucking shit. Well, if we have, um, I agree with you, you, you get situations in the budget in Texas, and I guess in your school board, where you're getting people that are not ideal, and some people who are flat out unqualified. I want to point out in Texas, what you have there are political groups that are very active, right? And they go in there and they put their people in charge of the school board because they have, you know, they have really good ground games and they really have a lot of good networking and they're just, they're playing the democratic game. And yes, this is a fun, this is a flaw with democracy, but I mean, this, this is something we've all known that you could get people whipped up to vote for someone who is really not going to be their, in their best interests. But 